So it is a real pleasure to be here and see so many old friends. My story begins in the fall of 72 when uh, there was a convergence on Princeton of Stuart and Joyce moved from here. There I went off to college, having graduated from high school in Kentucky. And uh, John Greenhall, who I'll mention uh, shortly, came down from New City, New York, also to uh, start college and became my lifelong friend. As uh, Jerry showed, this was a pretty amazing uh, faculty at the time. I'll skip over this now and maybe come back to it later. So Stuart, uh, well, actually, I'll show one thing. Uh, I took, signed up for freshman physics, Physics 103 honors with, in Halliday and Resnick. Princeton had an interesting way of teaching it, which was that the professor, who was uh, Tom Carver there, just gave a one-hour magic show with all the demonstration once a week. And the other four hours of the week were what, uh, what uh, Princeton called precepts, where Stuart, having fresh with his PhD, was the equivalent of my TA. So I spent four hours every week in my first semester of college, 12 weeks, with Stuart in a group of 20 other young uh, students, which was really quite remarkable. That, if you remember fall of 72, that's when, uh, according to the campus poll, McGovern was going to beat Nixon by a landslide. And uh, the Vietnam War was still going on. So this mix of people, 20 people before class, after class, sometimes during, during class, we had lots of interesting discussions. Of course, we, depending on where we came from, we all had our, our, our passions. Uh, my, coming from Louisville, of course, I cared about basketball and Cassius. And, uh, and uh, at least from what I read in the newspaper, uh, in Berkeley in those days, they, they had somewhat different passions. <laughs> um, and, and so this all made for a lot of interesting discuss, uh, discussion. Uh, people from the Bible Belt, some believers, some skeptics, and, and whatnot. We, it, it was actually quite a remarkable uh, few months in, in my life, as you might imagine, coming out of uh, Louisville with parents from the Deep South. Um, then, uh, I should say that, that at the end of that semester, I met a different Stuart, Stu Smith, who was my professor for the next three semesters. Uh, and uh, by, the end of the, by the end of that, then two years, I, who had been trying to decide between math and physics, was, was pretty definitely headed towards physics. Some math professors helped with that decision as well. And, <laughs> and, and, and uh, I didn't see much of Stuart in uh, sophomore and junior year, but in the spring of my junior year, I did a junior paper with Jerry Garvey on uh, trying to understand the work that he had been doing with Bob Tribble on the, lith on the uh, Mass 8 system. And so that went well enough, I guess, that we decided that I would do my senior thesis as well in the, in the cyclotron lab. And when I arrived in the fall of 75 to begin work on it, Jerry told me that his friend, Stuart Friedman, who of course I knew well uh, from freshman year, had also found an undergraduate student, uh, John Greenhall, who was going to do a senior thesis also in the cyclotron lab. So the, the four of us teamed up to do beta alpha angular correlation in the, these two systems, the li, uh, lithium-8 and sodium-20. You, you can tell by my notation I became a high-energy physicist. That, that, um, and so with, with uh, in one reaction, deuterians from the cyclotron, I, couldn't, my, I looked at my thesis, I didn't put the energy, it's not so good, but uh, uh, made lithium-8 and the other, protons on, on neon 20, which is just the neon and spark chamber gas, made sodium 20. And in both cases, there was a beta decay to an excited state of a nucleus that then alpha decayed. And there was a lot of interest in that time in looking for the angular correlation between these uh, beta and alpha, which had a cosine theta term just from the kinematics that the nucleus was moving when it decayed, with a cosine squared term that carried some physics. And in, in fact, uh, in listening to all these talks this morning, I didn't realize quite how much this fit into the pattern, that, because there had been a pre previous experiment at another university that had gotten an anomalously large value for this angular correlation. And uh, so we set out to measure it. 
by modifying the apparatus that Bob Tribble had used for his thesis. Using, a, he, he had the cyclotron beam just going and, and hitting a target, which was at the end of the stepping motor here. But there was this new idea that in, in the room where the cyclotron went was this chamber with uh, helium gas or spark chamber gas, and the reaction, the cyclotron beam would hit here and make the radioactive element, both of us had about a half second lifetime, and this capillary would then carry the radioactive material over here and deposit on this in the arm and the stepping, over, uh, stepping motor would put it over here in the middle of this chamber where there were two um, phototubes looking at the beta, scintillators looking at the beta, and deep inside were two state-of-the-art at that time silicon surface barrier detectors to uh, measure the total energy of the alpha or even the oxygen-16 recoil. And uh, so we got help from this with all the other people in the lab, uh, Tom Bowles and Bob McEwen and Rosemary Beltrasitis were senior graduate students. Hamish Robertson was visiting there for the year from Michigan State at the time, I think. And uh, I remember he got interested in some of this machining as, as well. It was really quite an amazing experience for, for John and me. Um, whoops, I gave him a secret. Uh, so uh, so uh, the only problem was uh, John and I, we'd known each other not terribly well. and. Uh, we were bickering. I, in thinking back, I, I'm not quite sure why. We, we were both nice guys and uh, deep principled same. I think I say we were lifelong friends. I was just visiting him a few weeks ago on Long Island. But we were bickering a lot. And Stuart thought that this was getting in the way of, of progress. So he, he, said, uh, he said, basically, it doesn't matter who's right. You just got to make a decision and, and get going, because these are trivial things you're arguing about. And now uh, what color duct tape to use? And, and so he said, he, he took out some uh, paper stickers and said, Bob, uh, today you're going to be the boss. And he writes the boss in big block letters on this sticker. And he says, John, you're the flunky. <laughs> block, big block letters. And so I put on the sticker, the boss, the flunky, and everybody had a good time with that. And then he says, then the next day, you just switch stickers. So the next day, we switch stickers, and he's the boss, and, and I'm the flunky. So that lasted a few days, but these stickers uh, changing sh shirts every day, at some point, they, they stopped sticking. So uh, I guess the bickering must have just restarted. So, so then one day, Joyce comes in with two t-shirts, John still has his, I saw it in Long Island. Here's the one I kept. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so then uh, we just put on our T-shirts. And so on, on Monday, uh, that's me there, in case you don't want the flunky. And then the next day, uh, and then the next day, <laughs> And uh, it worked out great. We, uh, we got the experiment done. We got all the decisions made. And uh, meanwhile, we were just both hanging on every word of Jerry and, and Stuart, um, even you know, repeating to each other what, what they had w said, what we, what we learned from them. Uh, you bet. Um, and uh, I could write pages of these, but the, I, I think my favorite was that time when we were deep in the lab working on something and Stuart had some clever way to do something and, and he says, oh, everyone has their own tricks. Everyone thinks their tricks are the best. My tricks are the best. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this was just fantastic. And, uh, um, the paper did eventually get published, uh, uh, submitted the following year with Carl Gagliardi, who was a, a first year student. And uh, in fact, uh, we measured this beta, angular, ang beta alpha angular correlation, uh, actually not well enough to distinguish between seeing nothing and seeing uh, CVC, but enough to rule out the other experiment. So, and, and this was in fact John's senior thesis. Mine was in the uh, uh, Mass A system, which, which didn't, uh, didn't extend Bob Tribble enough to be worth publishing. But uh, 
So this was another example where Stuart measured nothing and, and got it right. Uh, so again, just looking at this picture, we see, uh, point out a few other people, Frank Calaprice in the back there, you may, you may find. Uh, Bill, uh, Bill Moore is stand, uh, keeping, the, kept the cyclotron going. Barbie's dad, as I knew him, uh, and uh, many other luminaries. So uh, that spring, uh, Stuart got an assistant professor job at Stanford. John and I both uh, got admitted to Stanford and became first year graduate students. So there was a uh, migration of the four of us to, to Stanford. And um, I had taken some grad courses at Princeton, so I had an opening in my freshman schedule and was able to take Stuart's uh, nuclear physics seminar for two quarters. I took uh, nuclear two, physics 241, two, 24241 for, from Stuart. I, looking through all those notes, I, I couldn't find anything uh, terribly funny, but I did notice one thing that he had, he had picked up, obviously, uh, from his Princeton days, which was a homework assignment on the garvey kelson mass relations. <laughs> um, and it, but uh, I, was, uh, I was already probably gonna, heading towards high energy physics rather than, uh, than the nuclear physics. John and I did do a rotation in his lab for a quarter. And uh, then in the fall of 77, Mel Schwartz gave a colloquium on an experiment he'd done at Brookhaven on pi mu atoms and uh, said he was going to do a better experiment at Fermilab. And Stuart took John and me aside and said, you know, you guys really go, go talk to Mel about doing that experiment. And so uh, within two months, John and I were in a car driving through a snowstorm in January 78 out to Fermilab where we uh, did do the experiment with Mel and, and had an absolutely fantastic experience. So uh, you can see it's just amazing the important roles St Stuart played in my, life, in my life from my first semester of college, four days a week through the senior thesis, and then actually very instrumental in the choice of my thesis advisor. Um, and I also remember sitting in Mel's office with Roberto talking about Higlitz. Roberto was already at Stanford at the, at the time. So we were probably a couple of the first undergrads that he had such an amazing mentorship with, but in, in preparing to come today, uh, with the help of Brad, I was able to contact a, a few others. Uh, of course, Justin, you heard from directly, but all these people with, with too much praise to write on slides uh, had just had wonderful things to say. I always remember Stuart for his kindness and concern for me as a young researcher. What I remember mostly looking back is all the mistakes we made in the lab. We, we really were breaking things, and, and Stuart just had amazing patience now that I, I look back. And, and especially these cyclotrons runs, which were three days of no sleep. And as you get further and further into it, you're just making more and more mistakes. So one of the things I remember him telling me was just, as you get more and more sleep deprived, you have to slow down <laughs> in order to think more carefully. Um, I, None of these people were able to get me a photo, and I couldn't find any other photos either, uh, except John Beacom at Ohio State. He had one from the summer of 91 where they were legally having Cuban cigars in, in Germany. Uh, John had two terrific summer experiences as, as undergrad, one in Grenoble and one in, <laughs> one in Argonne with Stuart. And I'd just like to read a couple of sentences that he sent me. He said, it was electrifying to meet someone so interesting and clever, especially because he was friendly to me, despite my being an ignorant kid from Kansas. He was very encouraging to me, even though he didn't have to be. I learned from him a great deal about how to think like a physicist, what constitutes interesting problems, and importantly, how to handle a wide variety of people. Well, so if you just change ignorant kid from Kansas to ignorant kid from Kentucky, I think that sums it up for me as well. So thank you all so much, uh, especially Joyce, Brian, everyone for providing this opportunity. It's great to see you all.